Hey everyone, today in the last words we're going to be talking about Hellfest, which was directed by Gregory Plotkin and was released in 2018. It seems to have flown under most horror fans' radar. I never really heard anything about the film, but I actually really enjoyed it. So first, a few uh, house cleaning notes. It's directed by Gregory Plotkin, who had also directed Paranormal Activity Ghost Dimension. Uh, that's pretty much the only other director credit on his resume, but he had edited a lot of films, including horror classics such as Get Out, Happy, Death Day, and the other Paranormal Activity movies. So this is kind of an interesting pivot for Gregory Plotkin. It was released by CBS and Lionsgate and was apparently intended to be a recurring franchise to compete with things like Saw and Paranormal Activity. In that sense, it seems to have been unsuccessful as I've not heard anything about there being a sequel and uh, like I said, it seems to kind of be under uh, the radar for most fans. It did gross $18 million at the box office against a $5 million budget, but that's really not too much for a uh, horror movie of this caliber. You know, we see things with a lot less of a budget make a lot more money than that. So I wonder if that is part of why it's kind of gone uh, radio silent since then, but hopefully we hear something more in the future. It has a 41% on Rotten Tomatoes, which isn't terrible, but of course isn't great. I feel like it's probably a little bit low for what this movie is, as long as you are a fan of the genre and you kind of know what you're getting yourself into. I think there's a lot to like here. So it's not fantastic, you know, probably going to say this a lot on this channel, but we're certainly not making a case that it's a great movie. It's no Citizen Kane, but you know, for what it is, it's a fun movie. It's a good slasher movie and it has a lot of uh, strong qualities. So it's a kind of timeless teen friend setup. Uh, they're not teens actually, but they're young people and it's a group of friends. The acting is not super great, but they all kind of fall into their archetypes and play those roles just fine. And there does seem to be a bond among the cast, which they kind of talk about in the making of that they all got to know each other and kind of just have fun with the movie. They were often encouraged just to, you know, have fun and be friends. And that comes through. They seem to have been able to capture that chemistry. I'm not normally a big fan of slasher movies, really. Uh, usually if it's just like a human killer, it's not my thing. There are a few exceptions, but what makes this one interesting to me is that it takes place in a haunted amusement park, Hellfest. And so it's basically like a giant haunted scary Six Flags or something like that. So there's all kinds of monsters and ghouls roaming around. There's a haunted house kind of feel to the whole thing and, and spooky traditional Halloween aesthetics. There's all kinds of great costumes and monster makeup and props just roaming through the movie if you pay attention and look for it. So that kind of helped balances out the uh, general slasher feel of the movie for me. It's part of what I really like about the movie. Um, I want to go to Hellfest. If, if such a thing existed, I would certainly go to that. Uh, I go to all the haunted houses, including the darkness here in St. Louis uh, in my area, and I've been to something like that at Six Flags, um, Haunted Horror Nights or something like that, they call it. But, you know, this is next level where it's movie production level of, of what something like that would be. So it just looks absolutely insane and awesome. It, it looks like a, the spooky island in the Scooby-Doo live-action movie, if you've seen that. So I would go to Hellfest in a heartbeat. It looks awesome. Um, and actually parts of it were shot in Six Flags Whitewater. I, you know, they converted the sets, and, and but you can get that real amusement park feel from the movie. It, it feels like a real place. Um, the mise-en-scene is just outstanding in the film. The, the colors, there's like this real saturated color palette that just goes through the whole movie. It's usually drifting in through cool light effects and heavy fog, and it just looks really cool. Most of the movie takes place at night and in dark interiors but they do this really great job with the lighting and the, and the colors and the shadows to just gives it a really specific look for what they're going for. Like I already mentioned, there's great costumes and props just kind of running all through the movie in the background that's easy to just take for granted and, and kind of not pay attention to, but if you like that kind of thing, there's a lot to latch on to. Uh, the music is by Bear McCreary, who has got famous kind of since then for doing the Godzilla King of the Monsters soundtrack. So Bear McCreary is, of course, a great composer, and the soundtrack is pretty pretty cool. There's a recurring theme for the serial killer, for the killer in this, uh, that pops up whenever he's on screen, and he kind of hums at points, and it's catchy. It's a good traditional scary kind of horror motif. Uh, the, the concept is such a kind of ubiquitous classic concept but it feels pretty underutilized in film there's things like um, horror land and the goosebump series and i'm sure that there are plenty of other examples and there's lots of like spooky carnivals and, and things like that but this like idea of a whole movie taking place in this uh, haunted amusement park 
it's pretty fresh and the fact that that's not actually even the the basis of the horror like in something goosebumps uh horror land that there's actually this real threat kind of going on beneath that superficial uh spooky threat uh is what makes it really interesting and is the kind of principal dynamic of the movie of you know what is happening here is this part of the scares of the amusement park or is this something that's not supposed to be happening and that this person is taking advantage of to kind of commit their crimes um, so it's, it's cool. It's really uh, unique. I can't think of many things like it. Uh, I'm sure there are examples, but it's, especially as far as like a big blockbuster mainstream horror movie, it, right there it kind of has its own neat hook that we don't see a lot. Uh, without spoiling anything, the ending is also really cool, like the actual final ending, final scene. Um, I won't get into it, but it does just provide this kind of interesting deeper twist to the movie and uh, makes you kind of re-examine everything that you had seen up until that point it makes it great on a rewatch. it's nothing totally ground shattering but just the way they pull it off is very effective so overall i really like hellfest i think it's underrated i don't think it's like amazing but as far as modern slasher movies go i don't feel like it gets its due it gets you know i i got laughs and scares out of it uh, it has a cool concept the visuals are great there's good music i really liked it uh, i would recommend it if you haven't checked it out that's hellfest by gregory plotkin Check back for more. Thanks.